Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the preview for the 2024 Chinese Grand Prix. Yes, for the first time since 2019, F1 is back in China. Get used to hearing that this weekend. It is also the first sprint weekend of the season, as if that news wasn't exciting enough for you all. It's actually the first of two back-to-back -back sprint events. Very exciting. It's still mad to me, by the way. We've not been to China for so long, and yet they've still decided to hold the first sprint of the year, meaning there's just a one practice session. What could possibly go wrong? But anyway, let's crack on with the preview, starting, as always, with a look at the circuit and all the usual stats that follow. So last time out, F1 was in Japan where Max Verstappen made it three wins on the bounce at Suzuka to extend his championship lead. But now it is on to Shanghai for the fifth round of the 2024 season. Despite the fact it's been five years since the last time we saw F1 cars on track, there have been no changes to the layout of the Shanghai International Circuit, with the lap still being 5.451 kilometers long. That's just over 3.3 miles. It's made up of 16 corners with 56 racing laps scheduled for Sunday's race, 19 for the sprint. And the race lap record is still held by Michael Schumacher, who posted a 132.238 all the way back in 2004. This weekend, there will be two DRS zones in use, with the first running down the super long back straight between turns 13 and 14, and the second down the start finish straight. You can expect to see most overtaking happening at the hairpin at turn 14. We might see some side-by-side -side action through the first couple of corners. That's a great sequence of corners, by the way. And hopefully, we'll see some moves into turn 6 as well. That's actually a good spot to try the old switcheroo, as Crofty calls it. You know, cut back underneath your rival on the exit and try to pass before the fast turn 7, or try and move around the outside of turn 7. That's always fun to watch. Turn 11 isn't a terrible place to try and overtake, but it could leave you very vulnerable down the straight as the DRS detection point is directly after it. On that note, by the way, I really hope the DRS zone down the back straight isn't too overpowered. It is something we've seen at the circuit in the past. And last time out in China, Valtteri Bottas, who was top of the championship at the start of the weekend, took pole position, but was beaten to the win by Lewis Hamilton, who led the Finn home with Sebastian Vettel and his moustache taking the final step on the podium. Pierre Gasly, then in a Red Bull, set the fastest lap of the race with a 134.742 on lap 55. Now, I know it's been a pretty long time in F1 terms anyway, since the last race in China, but it was just five years ago. Yes, five years, that's five. Which, by the way, was also Sebastian Vettel's race number, the number of wins Max Verstappen had at the time, and in 2024, the race is round five of the season. That is a heck of a lot of fives. Oh, and five is also the number of dry tyre compounds in the Pirelli range. Oh yes, it's your favourite time of the week. It is tyre talk time once again. The compounds available for this one then are right down the middle of the range, and so they are the hard C2, the medium C3, and the soft C4. That is the same selection as it was back in 2019, although it's got to be said the tyres have changed drastically since then. For example, back in 2019, F1 was still using 13-inch tyres, and we're now running 18-inch. So the track layout may be unchanged, but it has been resurfaced since F1 last visited, and work has been carried out to grind down some of the bumps in the surface. As everyone seems keen to point out, this weekend is like starting all over again due to the lack of representative data, the new surface, and the fact the track apparently hasn't been used all that much over the last few years. All of that also means that the track will be green, not a lot of grit, basically, and so track evolution is expected to be very high, so qualifying, both qualifying sessions, could be very interesting. Despite all the question marks around how the cars and tyres will get on, Pirelli says that based on simulations, tyres are subjected to medium, lateral and longitudinal forces, with the outside of the tyre, especially on the left-hand side of the car, wearing the most. It is also expected the undercut will be fairly powerful on Sunday, as it was in Suzuka, so that's something to keep an eye on here. For what it's worth, which given how much the tyres have changed over the last five years isn't really a lot, the winning strategy back in 2019 was a two-stopper with Lewis Hamilton starting on the medium tyres before switching to the hards on lap 22 and then pitting for a second time on lap 36 for a final set of the medium tyres. Mercedes pulling off the perfect double stack in the pit lane during that final round of stops, if you remember. Two stops, by the way, was usually the preferred option in China in the past, thanks in part to the fact overtaking is very much possible. As for the usual final points on strategy, the total pit lane loss time last time in China was largely between 22 and 25 seconds. And the full safety car has made at least one appearance at four of the last five races in Shanghai, although there was a five-year gap with no safety cars between 2010 and 2015. The weather, by the way, will going forward be shown in this part just as a graphic rather than me reading over it so it's the most up-to-date it can be.
The schedule for this one is once again an early one over here. And don't forget, we have a new weekend running order for the sprint events with a single practice session on Friday morning. Sprint qualifying, which is handily now called sprint qualifying rather than a shootout. Crazy thoughts. That now moves to Friday afternoon with the sprint race itself taking place on Saturday morning. That means qualifying for the actual race takes its usual Saturday afternoon spot, which is good news. I'm interested to see how that works out. If nothing else, I think the weekend will flow much better than it did before. It is also worth noting that Park Ferme kicks in at the start of sprint quali. It is lifted after the sprint race, so teams can make changes to things like the setup. And it's back in force again from the start of Grand Prix qualifying. And a lot of people wanted that to happen. It has now. But anyway, that first practice session gets things going from 4.30 a.m. BST on Friday. And sprint qualifying is scheduled to start at 8.30 a.m. The sprint race is the first session on Saturday and that starts at 4am with qualifying underway at 8am and it is lights out for the race on Sunday at 8am and once again that is in UK time. And just to let you know we will be live shortly after the race on Sunday rather than on Monday to give our initial reaction to the race. If you're wondering why that is changing then pop on over to the community section here on YouTube where you'll find a full explanation if you're interested. Now, before I get on to my probably terrible predictions, let's have a run through a few talking points, really, or news stories, I suppose, I have been doing the rounds ahead of this weekend's action. So first up, drivers are not overly thrilled at the prospect of the first sprint of the season being held in China. Max Verstappen said that it is not great because they've been away from the track for quite a while, five years, of course, I've already mentioned more than a couple of times. And that means drivers won't know what they're going to experience out there. And so it would have been better if it had been a normal weekend this time around. As Max says, though, the flip side of all of that is it probably spices things up a little bit. The Dutchman adds, quote, purely from a driving and performance perspective of the sport, I think it's not the smartest thing to do. We'll see what we get. He's not alone, though, with Carlos Sainz saying he thinks he sprinted China is a good idea as it's good for racing or a good track for racing and overtaking is possible, but stated that going from a single practice session and straight into sprint qualifying with the current cars, given the regulations on things like plank wear, means it's not a good idea to have these sprints after five years away from the circuit, adding that, in his opinion, they shouldn't take the risk and echo what Verstappen said about how this should have been a normal race weekend. Hopefully, the changes to part firm have already gone over will mean that issues with things like plank wear will be a thing of the past. We'll see what happens over the weekend, though. There's some good news for Alpine. God knows they need it, specifically Esteban Ocon ahead of this weekend's action, with the team confirming to motorsport.com that the upgrade package, which was expected to arrive in Miami and consists of a revised floor, is actually ready a race early and so will be installed on Ocon's car in Shanghai. Haas will also bring updates to China, the first part of their 2024 package, with Ayo Komatsu explaining that the plan for practice, if it stays dry at least, is to spend the session trying to set the car up for the new aero package. According to reports, although I found nothing official from the team, or at least a list from the team at time of recording, the updates are expected to include a new floor as well as some refinements to the bodywork, with AMUS saying that it'll just be Kevin Magnussen getting the tweaks on the car for this weekend's race in China. And in case you missed it, the 2025 calendar was published in between race weeks. Not that it's relevant to China, but still very much worth a quick mention. The, I suppose, honour of hosting the season opening race, the first of 24, will return to Australia. And that makes up the first part of a season opening doubleheader with China. Japan will be the third round of the season. It kicks off a triple header with Bahrain and Saudi Arabia because, you know, F1's got a F1. The European season gets started at Imola on May 18th and apart from a flyaway to Canada runs until Hungary, the final race for the summer break on the 3rd of August. Super quickly, no idea why. By the way, there are two completely empty weekends between Silverstone and Spa given the summer break is so close, but sure. The Dutch Grand Prix will get the season going again after that break on August 31st. And it's got to be said, the second part of the season is far less stop-start than it will be this year, but does end with the same triple header of Vegas, Qatar and Abu Dhabi. Right then, shall we make some predictions for this one then? I think so. As always though, don't take these too seriously. They're just a little bit of fun. If you do disagree with mine, you can let me know yours in the comments section down below. And last time out, I don't think they were too bad, he says through partially gritted teeth. I was over ambitious on picking Leclerc for pole. Hold that thought and bear that in mind for a couple of minutes down the line. But I was right about Verstappen's win, Sainz on the podium and Mercedes being the fifth best finishing team on Sunday. Look, you know, it doesn't sound great, but three points is a good weekend for me. As for this week, although we have lots of information from the first four races of this season, these probably are a bit more guesswork than usual. After all, all the info and data we have is well out of date for China and the lack of practice could really mix things up at least a little bit. That said, I don't think it's all that controversial to say that Red Bull may well have a really good chance of picking up a win in China. 
Sarcasm aside, of course, despite all the uncertainty, there will be favourites going into the weekend. The circuit characteristics, though, the fact it is front limited, for example, as well as the cooler temperatures, could be a boost for Ferrari. I'll not say advantage because, you know, Red Bull exists, but yes, a welcome boost anyway. It will also be interesting to keep an eye on McLaren this weekend because although there are a few medium and high speed corners, the track is largely made up of slower speed corners, which won't play to their strengths. So they may well end up closer to that fight between Aston and Mercedes than they will be to, say, Red Bull and Ferrari. With all of that in mind, though, I do think it'll be Red Bull and Ferrari dueling out at the front if we're lucky. So I'm doing it again. I'm sorry. I've got to try and mix these up a little bit rather than just saying Verstappen across the board. So Charles Leclerc for P1 in sprint quality and pole for the race. You know, the race actually matters. However, given they are stronger in race trim, not that they're weak in qualifying, but you know what I mean. I'll go with Verstappen for wins on both Saturday and Sunday. It is also worth reminding you that part Fermi lifts after the sprints. If a team goes the wrong way on setup, they can make changes between the sprint and qualifying. Equally, teams could set up their cars specifically for the sprint to make changes after that. It might sound unlikely that will happen, but the sprint could end up being a bit of an extra practice session for the teams that are unlikely to score points on Saturday. But anyway, back to the point. As for the podium, honestly, it'll likely be a mix of Red Bulls and Ferraris. I've gone with Leclerc P2 and Perez P3 though this week, but it could very easily be both Ferraris up there or Sainz P2 and Perez P3 or another Red Bull 1-2. I've gone with that order though, simply because I put Leclerc on pole and although it's possible he'd miss out, it's happened before, I'd fancy him for a top three finish if he started P1. If there was ever a weekend for some bold picks, this is it. There are just so many unknowns. So I'm going with points for a Haas in the sprints, let's say Hulkenberg. And Alpine in Q2, probably Ocon in both qualifying sessions, given he's got the updates. Fernando Alonso for a podium if we get a little bit of drama. And Joe Guan Yu, who is, of course, my one to watch that been his home Grand Prix, manages to nick a point on Sunday afternoon at his home race. That all sounds like a lot of fun. So expect all 20 cars finishing, no drama and an easy Red Bull 1-2. You know what my predictions are like. That is it for the Chinese Grand Prix preview then, but don't forget you can let me know your thoughts and your predictions ahead of the weekend in the comments section down below. And let me know as well, is this your first time watching the Chinese Grand Prix live or did you get to watch it back in 2019? I'd be interested to know. Now I will be back soon with some more content and don't forget you can join us live shortly after the race on Sunday for some race reaction. In the meantime though, if you did enjoy this one, then please do leave a like as it really does help the channel out and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos or streams. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.